This video is not about average archaeological discoveries, nor is it about findings that are only fairly impressive. Space in this recording has been reserved only for those finds that are out of this world. We're talking about phenomenal finds that blew the minds of the people who discovered them and might blow your mind right now when you see them. Strap yourself in and let's get into the discoveries. Let's start off with this set of stone anchors, discovered in the River Weir in England in March 2021. The anchors are ancient Roman in origin. The team responsible for their discovery believes they're the first sign of a previously unknown ancient Roman port in the area. The anchors are the most significant finds among a whole treasure trove of 2,000-year-old Roman discoveries in the area which is allowing historians and archaeologists to see the Sunderland region in a new light. Although stone anchors like this have been discovered in the United Kingdom before, this is the first time they've been found in a river. Archaeologists aren't quite sure what to make of that, and so they think the presence of a port would be the most likely explanation. The Romans of the time were trying to suppress the brigands in northern Britain, so a port here might have provided a strategic advantage. The presence of a model boat among the finds may also hint at the existence of a port, although it could also be a child's toy. Long before the ancient Chinese began to make fruit wine, they made rice wine. Until now, it's always been thought that rice wine remained the wine of choice across China until around 2,000 years ago, when fruit wine began to emerge and take its place. That theory might have to change. In March 2021, archaeologists made a remarkable discovery in an ancient tomb in Yuncheng, within the country's Shanxi province. The tomb was created during the days of the Shao dynasty some 3,000 years ago, and contained, among other things, eight kettles made of bronze. Two of the sealed kettles still had a clear liquid at the bottom of them. The liquid was taken away for analysis at the University of Chinese Academy of Science and found to be the remains of fruit wine. This is the first time that fruit wine from before the Qin period, which began 2,200 years ago, has been found anywhere in China. What we don't yet know is whether fruit wine was confined to just this one area or whether its use was more widespread. That's a fun new problem for archaeologists to work on. Given how people tend to become obsessed with it these days, it's difficult to imagine a time before money. Such a time definitely existed in ancient history, though, and all manner of things might have been used as an alternative form of currency. For the Chumash Indians, the hunter-gatherers who roamed across Santa Barbara and California, USA, it seems that tiny shell beads did the trick. Thanks to a study that was published in January 2021, historians now believe that the Chumash were using shell bead money 2,000 years ago, twice as far into the past as previous estimates went. Chumash mass production facilities for the manufacture of shell beads have been discovered in the past, but it was thought that they didn't get around to using them for bartering and trading until about 1,000 years ago. That estimate changed when a single individual was discovered buried with tens of thousands of such beads, all of which appeared to be deliberately shaped and standardized. If this new theory is true, it would represent the first use of any type of money anywhere in the Americas, and would also force us to reconsider our opinion of the complexity and socio-political capabilities of hunter-gatherers. Scandinavia must be a great place to be an archaeologist, because you're never too far away from a Viking discovery. Here's one that dates back to April 2016. It's a 10th century Viking treasure discovered by an amateur archaeologist using a metal detector. The lucky metal detectorist, who'd only owned his instrument for less than a week at the time he made the find, thought the only artifact he'd discovered was a silver bull. That wasn't the case. He summoned professional archaeologists to the scene, and they cut out a whole block of soil and took it back to a nearby laboratory for closer study. Within their cube of mud, 
they found a whole 392 Viking artifacts. The collection includes a further two silver bowls, more than 50 silver pendants, hundreds of beads made from silver, rock crystal, amber, and glass, coins gathered from across Western Europe and the Arabian Peninsula, rings, chains, and bracelets. Given the close proximity of the goods, it's highly likely they were buried on purpose by someone who, for unknown reasons, was never able to come back and dig them up again. The ancient Egyptians loved their pets every bit as much as we love our pets today. And when they passed away, they buried them with the same degree of respect and dignity that they'd afford to a human. We know this because of the discovery of a vast pet cemetery on the outskirts of Berenice, Egypt in March 2021. At 2,000 years old, this is both the oldest and largest cemetery of its kind on record. Even after all this time, the level of love and care given to these animals in death is obvious. Dogs and cats are wrapped in blankets with some of them still wearing collars made with glass and stone beads on a string. Some of the graves appear to be family graves, used for interring various pets together. In one example, there's a monkey buried alongside three cats and a piglet. All of the animals at the site appear to have passed away due to old age or illness. There are just under 600 animals here in total. Some historians like to make out that the people of the ancient world didn't keep pets because they had no concept of such a relationship with an animal, but the existence of this site proves them wrong. Here's another animal-related find, albeit not one that involves real animals. It's a collection of ancient dog figurines that were found in the ancient Japanese city of Nara in February 2021. They were found alongside a set of miniature tea utensils, although it's not known if the two discoveries are related. The discoveries were made inside a well-kept, unspoiled grave dated to 1589. The burial site contained the remains of a child, which might offer us some context to the finds. The tiny dogs might be toys, as might the tea set. Very young children enjoy playing with miniature tea sets now. So why would we imagine things were any different in the 16th century? The toys were found inside a small hagama, a type of cooking pot that was in popular use at the time. The placement of the pot inside a child's grave is unusual, so archaeologists believe it might have been used purely because nothing else was available. The discovery of a child's grave is always a sad, poignant moment. But finding toys inside such a grave is a reminder that children back then played, thought, and behaved in a similar manner to the children of today. If you enjoy a good beer every now and then, remember to raise a glass to the people of Abydos next time you're drinking. You might have them to thank for the very existence of the beverage you're enjoying. We say that because of the discovery of what might be the world's first beer brewing facility in Abydos, Egypt in February 2021. According to the team responsible for the discovery, beer was first brewed at this site a whole 5,000 years ago. Egypt had only just come into existence at that point, having been unified under King Narmer. The ancient beer factory is surprisingly large and sophisticated for its age. The site is divided into eight brewing units, with 40 basins inside each unit. The basins would have contained a combination of grains and water which would have been slowly and carefully heated up until they created what was, in all likelihood, quite a weak and tasteless beer. When it's the only beer in existence, though, we suppose people would take whatever they could get. While it's possible that the beer was created for recreational reasons, archaeologists think it's more likely to have had a ritual or ceremonial use. Professional sports might never have made more money than they do today, but the love of the sport is ancient. It goes back to almost the dawn of time, and in truth, we've probably forgotten the rules of more sports than those we remember how to play. Archaeologists are fairly convinced that these ancient Chinese balls are related to a sport of some kind, but they have no idea what it might have been. The mystery balls, stuffed full of hair, 
were found inside the graves of a horse-riding community in the Yanghai Cemetery site in the northwest of China in late 2020. Experts say the graves are roughly 3,000 years old. Each ball is around the size of a human fist and is made of leather. They're vaguely similar to baseballs, but it's doubtful that they were used in a similar game. It's more likely that the game might have been similar to polo. We've already mentioned that the tombs belonged to a community of horse-riding people, and it's not insignificant that the owners of the tombs, the balls were found inside, were dressed for riding horses. Polo is thought of as a sport of the British upper class, but might it have roots in China? While we know an awful lot about the ancient Romans, we know very little about the people who came before them. Before Rome took control of the area around it, the Italian peninsula belonged to the ancient Etruscans. They reached the peak of their civilization around 2,500 years ago. They had a written language, but we've never been able to translate it. We don't know much about their artwork either, but a new technique means we might discover more in the very near future. The technique is known as multi-illumination hyperspectral extraction. That's a long and complicated term, but it basically means detecting and then restoring the original colors used in paintings, so we can see them as the artists intended us to see them. Through that technique, paintings from the Tomb of the Monkey that once looked like nothing more than red blobs suddenly become sharp and detailed. A whole vista of the Etruscan underworld, including trees, rocks, and pools of water, has been revealed using the technique. Prior to its development, none of this detail was visible to the naked eye at all. Slowly but surely, we're getting to know the Etruscans better. This 5,000-year-old crystal dagger is clearly a beautiful, valuable object. It's also something of an enigma. The weapon was found in a large tomb close to Seville in Spain. The crystal used to make it doesn't occur naturally anywhere near Seville. That means the parts must have been sourced from far and wide. And so it surely belonged to someone of great wealth and power. Experts in ancient weaponry say that this is the most technically sophisticated prehistoric dagger ever to be found on the Iberian Peninsula. Ten arrowheads and a further four blades were found inside the same tomb. But in terms of significance, they pale in comparison to the crystal dagger. The handle of the weapon is made of ivory, another material that wouldn't be available locally. The ownership of this weapon would have been a compelling statement of authority. It's remarkable that it was buried with the tomb's occupant rather than being kept or stolen by anyone who was still living at the time. Sadly, we have no idea who the tomb's occupant was. However, we do know he was poisoned, so the dagger didn't protect him from his ultimate fate. For more than 20 years, a village priest in Sluskau, Poland, tried to tell anybody who would listen about the existence of a treasure trove in a cornfield close to his church. In December 2020, he was finally proven right. Thousands of artifacts have been found in the field, all of which date back to the 12th century. The bulk of the goods are coins and jewelry. If the priest is to be believed, this is the personal wealth of a Ruthenian princess who was once the sister-in-law of King Boleslaw the Rymouth. A supposedly full excavation of the field had been carried out in the past, but Father Stakowiak insisted that they'd missed an important area closer to the road at the intersection of three plots of land. He was vindicated when Dr. Adam Kadzirski from the Polish Academy of Sciences eventually found over 6,500 silver coins in linen pouches, gold rings, a pair of wedding bands, and a collection of silver ingots. One of the rings carries the inscription, Lord, may you help your servant Maria. That would be the right name for the aforementioned Ruthenian princess. So it appears the priest was right about the entire story. It's not every day you hear about an archaeological discovery being compared to the Sistine Chapel. So we guess that must make this Colombian find 
pretty special. It's a huge collection of prehistoric artwork that was found in the Colombian reaches of the Amazon in late 2020. It's hard to do justice to the scale of the site. The paintings and drawings cover an area of almost eight square miles and are more than 12,000 years old. It's astonishing that they've remained hidden until now, but that can be put down to their extremely remote location. The paintings are mostly covered by thick jungle in an area that's miles from any significant settlements. The people who made these works of art might even have been the very first humans to live in this part of the world. They left their handprints here on the rocks for us to find, but they also completed detailed paintings of the animals and wildlife they saw around them. While some of the animals can be identified as sloths, horses, and mastodons, others are harder to define and may be extinct or perhaps even mythical. There are a few human figures depicted on the rocks too, engaged in an activity that looks a lot like bungee jumping. We're sure that's not really what they were up to, but we'll probably never know. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!